Good morning, everyone. My name is Alicia, and I'm the president and co-founder of PopTech Institute. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today at the CPI CyberPort Incubating Webinar. It is a great pleasure for us to work with CyberPort to deliver this event to you. We will be sharing experiences of the CyberPort Incubation Program, how it has helped some startups to grow, as well as some tips on the application process. So, whether you are thinking of launching your own startup or already on your journey and would like to learn more about the resources and support from CyberPort, we hope that today's webinar will be helpful to you. Today, we will be joined by four PopTech Institute startup members Gary from Real and Flow, and also a fellow co founder of PopTech Institute, Kyle from Ruth, Simon from HK Deckelman, and Ayman from Workplace Beta. We will also be joined by CyberPort's admission representative, Steve. We will start up today's event with a quick introduction of PopTech Institute and CyberPort, and then we will move on to the fireside chat. Now, let me tell you a little bit about PopTech Institute. PopTech Institute is a nonprofit organization in Hong Kong dedicated to promoting PopTech, which stands for Property Technology. We seek to be the bridge between two of the biggest and most important industries that touch our daily lives, real estate and technology, and unite these two giants to make positive and lasting impact to the industry and wider community. Since our inception, we have been at the forefront of the development of PopTech, being the voice of the community, the education hub, a platform for startups to connect to investors, users, as well as other startups, and also seek to be the gateway for international startups to launch in Hong Kong and use Hong Kong as a springboard to the GBA and the rest of the region. We at PopTech Institute strongly believe that PopTech is the future of real estate and that will make this basic human need, a shelter over our heads, more sustainable, efficient, and accessible. We hope that you will enjoy today's sharing and learn more about our members' journey, as well as the Cyberport Incubation Program. Now, may I hand you over to Steve, Cyberport's admission representative, who will give you an overview of Cyberport and the Incubation Program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. Thank you for, I thank you all for coming and joining us here today. I'm Steve Lamb, Admission Manager in the Entrepreneurship Division. Um, right. So, Cyberport is uh, managed by Hong Kong Cyberport Management Company Limited, which is wholly owned by the Hong Kong SAR government, uh, with a vision to be the hub for digital technology uh, field by creating a new economic driver for Hong Kong. Cyberport is committed um, to nurturing a vibrant tech ecosystem by cultivating talent, um, promoting entrepreneurship among youth. Um, supporting startups on the growth journey, uh, fostering industry development by promoting collaboration with local um, and international partners, and, and integrating new and traditional economies by accelerating digital adoptions in the public and private sectors. So here comes the um, very brief overview on our campus. Uh, as you can see, um, the Entrepreneurship Center in purple, uh, which is located in the suburb of three. Um, we also have seven co-working spaces, which under the, under the name um, Smart Space, um, spanning across the Cyberport campus. Uh, we have our hotel, which is the La Meridian Cyberport. Uh, we also have our eSports venue in the arcade. And of course, we also have the Smart Space 8 um, in Chinwa. Um, packed with office buildings, shopping facilities, entrepreneurship center, um, a, a hotel and car park spaces and other community facilities, Cyberport served as a showcase for the solutions of um, smart living startups. Um, Cyberport is an innovate, innovative digital community with around 16, um, 1,600 startups and technology companies. Our extensive support and global network gives startups um, impetus to innovate and live out their fullest um, potential. Um, our various initiatives um, in inspiring the next generation, um, nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit, and empowering global ambition have produced remarkable results. Uh, in last year, our FinTech cluster expanded um, to house nearly 400 um, companies, um, making Cyberport the largest FinTech community in Hong Kong, 
The highlight is, um, is the granting of uh, virtual insurance license um, to three more of our committee members, um, including Avo, uh, One Degree, and Dongan International. And on top of Bowtie, they can support home to um, all of the virtual insurers in Hong Kong um, as of today. Uh, with increasing globalization brings a diverse and international digital community to Hong Kong. Um, the tremendous mix of individuals and companies as cyber port, uh, which is one of our greatest assets, um, lends immeasurable strength um, to our ability to amass synergy, attract investors, amplify collaboration, and advance Hong Kong digital technology um, development. Together with the hard work of our startups, um, the dedicated support provided by cyber port. Um, our started have um, achieved very encouraging results. As you can see, um, the accumulated funds raised by um, cyber port um, startups overshoot um, 13 billion Hong Kong dollars and around eight unicorns in Hong Kong, four of them are from cyber port as well. Now, our goal is to establish innovation and technology as pillars of Hong Kong that we create continuous um, emphasis for our new economy. Uh, we have enriched our technical innovation and development efforts, not just to inspire and nurture, but also to discover exceptional uh, young innovators and connect them to our ecosystem, the industry, and the new economy. Uh, the new economy in, in, is inseparable from the traditional economy through the Cyberport Enterprise Network, CEN, and a series of major events. Cyberport is committed um, to promoting collaboration and building. Um, partnerships between well-established companies and startups so that they can complement each other's advantages um, to face the challenges in, in operations and create value. Uh, with these efforts, uh, Cyberforce overall competitiveness can be enhanced. Um, Cyberforce is also focused on uh, building free um, technology clusters, namely um, um, AI and big data, blockchain and cyber securities, uh, with a competitive team of professionals providing all-around value-added services to um, support our digital community and array of um, state-of-the-art technology um, facilities. Cyberport seeks to become the flagship uh, for Hong Kong's digital technology um, um, industry. Right, so we all understand that doing a startup business is never easy. That's why Cyberport has a, compress, uh, a comprehensive platform um, to reduce barriers uh, for our digital tech um, entrepreneurs. Um, joining the CCNF and the incubation program is just a start. As you can see, um, moving along the journey, we also have the Cyberport Accelerator um, Support Program, which is an additional sum of $300,000 um, financial assistance for our community members to join different accelerators um, approved by Cyberport to expand the market portfolio. And even after graduation, um, for our alumni, we also have the Overseas Mainland Market Development Support Scheme, which is in short, um, MBSS. Um, it's just an additional um, $200,000 um, financial assistance provided to our alumni members um, in order for them to join different promotion activities um, for the market expansion. And apart from all this, uh, we also have the Cyberport Macro Fund, uh, which is a co-investment fund operated by Cyberport. Uh, for each investment, we provide up to 20 million Hong Kong dollars per investee. Um, if you are committed members, you are eligible to apply for that. So these are all the financial assistance provided by Cyberport. Apart from all these, our committee members can also take on the Innovation and Technology Fund, which is an additional 2.8 million um, approximately. So altogether, you can expect more than 3 million Hong Kong dollars uh, you can get along the journey. Uh, we leverage our vast um, network and resources to help startups connect with traditional companies uh, and investors. Uh, promote industry collaboration and increase the chances of success for startups. Right, so Subway Enterprise Network, CEN, is a platform for collaboration to develop and strengthen engagement between enterprises and startup community, uh, providing a key connection within the ecosystem um, for the innovation and technology uh, industry. Subaport proactively reaches out to traditional enterprises um, to match their business pain points uh, with startups innovation digital solutions. Uh, during this year, uh, the CEN arranged uh, 30, 35 uh, business matching sessions uh, for more than 130 startups and nearly 8,000 projects have since uh, progressed uh, to do or advanced discussions. Uh, these projects range from blockchain applications uh, for a construction and engineering company um, to AI solutions uh, 
um, for a major local airlines. Right, so um, with technology developing um, in, in, in breakneck speed, uh, startups need to continually upgrade their skills and adopt um, cutting edge solutions to keep up uh, and stay ahead. Um, the Startup Port Technology Network, CTN, engages um, top technology companies uh, with seminars, trainings, workshops, and other um, skill building initiatives and special packages to facilitate solution adoptions. Um, to date, uh, the CEN has engaged 18 partners including Alibaba Cloud, um, AWS, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and Tencent Cloud. Right, so um, through engaging investors worldwide, startup support enhanced um, deal-making opportunities for our startups. Since its inception in um, 2017, CIN has gathered over 100 investors, including private equity funds, venture capital funds, um, corporate investors, angel investors, and family offices so that we can match the different investors to our startups. The network has thus far raised more than um, 600 million um, um, Hong Kong dollars in funds uh, for suburb force startup through uh, more than 30 investment matching projects with 11 deals completed in last year. So the suburb for micro fund CMF is an investment fund which, is, uh, which targets um, to co-invest with other private and public um, investors in the suburb for digital entrepreneurs. Um, the CMF, uh, with an initial size of um, 200 million Hong Kong dollars, um, is set in place to provide seed to Series A stage funding to suburb for digital entrepreneurs um, to assist them to accelerate and promote the development of the venture capital ecosystem by uh, for, for, for um, digital entrepreneurs in Hong Kong. Uh, from um, January to September 2020, um, the CMF invests um, 33 million, approximately uh, 4.14 million US um, in five startups, um, Aquamon, Gatlings, One Degree, um, Cambridge, and MetaConsent. At the same time, um, raising co-investments of um, 394 million Hong Kong dollars, uh, making total capital raise at um, 420, uh, 426 million Hong Kong dollars, uh, uh, approximately uh, 33 uh, million US. Um, during this period, um, the co-investment ratio has improved to 1 to 12 from the overall 1 to 6 ratio uh, throughout the years. The accomplishment also attests um, to the CMF's um, ability to attract tech investors and drive deal flow uh, for high potential, high growth startups, especially um, during this challenging time. So since Subaport um, established the CMF in 2016, it has already invested around 124 million Hong Kong dollars into seven um, in the 17 projects. All right, so thank you for allowing me to, um, to be here this morning, and hope that this activity has given you a much clearer understanding of support CCMF and incubation program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Now may I hand you over to our speakers of today. Thank you, Gary, Kyle, Island, and Simon for joining us today. Perhaps I'll start off with an introduction of yourselves and your company. Sure. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gary. I'm the co-founder of Real Inflow and also PropTech Institute. Uh, so what we do at Real Inflow is we are a real estate data database platform. Uh, we collect very granular information on transactions and buildings. And we enable uh, asset managers, valuers, and developers to save 90% of their time uh, researching uh, real estate. And we entered the Cyberport Incubation Program in June 2020. 
Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Cyberport and PTI, for inviting us over. Um, my name is Kyle. I'm the co-founder of Roots. Um, actually, myself also uh, was part of the CCMF program. We're an alumni right now, and we are currently the um, Cyberport incubatee, uh, which is about to graduate later this year. Roots is a property and a mortgage platform that provides pre-assessment analytics to our uh, potential home buyers. Um, this pre-assessment analytics can help them analyze uh, their risk tolerance level. So then home buyers will be able to understand whether banks will grant them a loan for a mortgage or not. And by so um, we can uh, not only increase the chance of them getting a loan and also eliminate the risk of forfeiting a deposit uh, on, the uh, on the property that they want to purchase. Great. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Ayman. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of a company called Workplace Beta. Uh, we're a Hong Kong-based technology company uh, where we focus on helping our clients to better understand how they, their employees and their occupants are using their workspace. Uh, we do this using a number of different technologies, uh, including our own in-house uh, developed uh, IoT sensors. And with this data, we hope and help our clients to uh, save money, uh, to develop cost efficiencies with their leasing and rental. But we also look towards providing them with a better user experience, as well as increased productivity of the employees and the, and the occupants. Um, hi, I'm Simon from Mature Tech Command. I'm the co-founder of the company. And uh, we are an online renovation platform. Basically, we digitalize the renovation platform so that we help the uh, our users, the landlords, match with the right company and right uh, materials. And by creating an ecosystem with uh, Deco Academy, Deco uh, e-commerce, and then the smart matching service, uh, we will re reduce the wastage through uh, finding friends to recommend companies to them. And then we split the value to different stakeholders. And we make sure that we are in, uh, 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 we are based in Hong Kong and we're going to expand to our, our global market. And we always make sure that we are in, the, uh, uh, by owning the online traffic, uh, we bring in stakeholders of the industry together so that people who want to drive uh, their agendas um, we think and do through us. And we are the gateway uh, between the online and offline market so that uh, different stakeholders, they rely on us to, um, uh, to, 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 to bring synergy. And then we um, uh, build, a track, uh, build a momentum that the competitors cannot match. All right, I see. So was there any personal experiences that inspired you guys to launch your product? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, for myself, I, I, I'm a chartered surveyor by trade and previously working for both uh, Spire Properties and Colliers International. Uh, gaining, um, just getting normal market data was always a frustration. So whether that was leasing transactions or sales transactions or information on a building, and this was, you know, not just in Hong Kong, but across different Asian markets as well. So I just got really frustrated and thought, you know, there must be a better way for the industry to work. Uh, so that's really why we created our platform. All right, I see. How about for you guys? Oh, well, um, for me, um, it's pretty interesting because um, as you may know, the property market in Hong Kong might be one of the most prosperous, but then um, actually Hong Kong doesn't provide uh, pre-approval for mortgages, um, unlike the overseas market, uh, such as the US, or some countries in the Europe. And actually a friend of uh, myself and my co-founder, Joe, um, who works in a, uh, in a big bank with a very decent salary, but she almost had to forfeit her deposit when she uh, wants to pur purchase the property because she doesn't understand the mortgage process. And um, it is quite complicated for someone who doesn't understand or never been through the process before. So we realized there's actually a big market for it. Like we want to help a lot of younger generations who spent uh, years after year trying to save up money to purchase property, but uh, have no idea how mortgage works. Um, so that's why how how we how it inspired us to come up with this idea with Roots to try to help people with um, the property purchasing process, especially mortgage. Yeah, I, I think that seems to be a common theme because I think for us at Workplace Beta, it was. Again, a similar frustration. I think when it comes to, I think we've all had that experience working uh, in a, in a uh, an office environment. Is uh, you always find times where it's hard to find a seat, um, or when you want to get a meeting room and they always either booked out the system or uh, you know the, the density of the of all your colleagues in the same room. I mean, I guess in a in Cantonese, a geo toilet, everyone kind of jams around one table and 
especially now with the pandemic, with COVID-19, with social distancing, with more demands on the actual space, uh, we found that just getting uh, basic information about these work environments was actually quite challenging. And we, that's what we thought uh, this could be an area for um, innovation in the space. And that's kind of what was the genesis of behind sort of the, this startup. Great. Okay, um, for us, uh, people will describe renovation as uh, spending money to buy suffering. And then you see from the news that most of the renovation news are about scams and so on. And it's a very long chain uh, 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 so that people can, uh, they need to spend a very short, of, uh, short time to master a lot of knowledge and it's very hard not to make bad decisions. So they, most, most people, they rely on friends' recommendations to find a company and it's far from optimal. And we try to solve this problem and save the wastage and then uh, create a value. Right, I see. Okay, let's take up the whiteboard next to you guys. So could you tell uh, the audience in one to two words, who was the one most important help that you have received from Cyberport? Okay. Hold that mic. <laughs> <laughs> So we have fun matching, credibility, branding, and office space. How about we start off with Simon, fun matching. Can you tell us what does that mean? Well, a cyber plan is a macro fun matching, apart from the uh, initial um, sum of the, of the incubating, at, uh, incubator, they have uh, 500 grand at the beginning, and then they have different kinds of fun. And then uh, because we are in a stage of uh, macro fund, not that um, the branding and uh, so on is not useful to us, but uh, we, uh, but we are at the at the point that we already uh, got a pre A round, and then we are going to the A round. Last year we signed a term sheet uh, with a company, uh, and the uh, Cyberport Micro Fund. Uh, actually, the Cyberport Micro Fund works like that. Uh, the investors, uh, if they invest uh, one dollar, uh, Cyberport will invest one dollar. Um, and uh, top, uh, the maximum selling is two hundred million dollars, uh, one dollars, and that we sign a term sheet of. Uh, uh, 150, 150 uh, Hong Kong dollars, a uh, million Hong Kong dollars uh, last year, last gen. But then uh, due to outbreak of uh, COVID-19, we call off uh, until this year and, it, uh, and Cyberpro was interested to match fund. Uh, it was very useful because the investors, they see us as uh, we have backup and they have option. And it will just bring us uh, to a more uh, feasible uh, place when there are so many startup choices. So um, although we haven't uh, got the macro fund yet, but it's uh, very, uh, we find it very useful to uh, open dialogue to uh, some of the um, global investors so that they see us as that with uh, government support. Right, I see. So um, it seems like the fund matching from Cyberport, of course, not uh, as well as the financial support, it also is like a stamp of approval, like a quality assurance to your investor as well. So that also kind of lends us towards branding and credibility. Could Kyle and Ima, do share a bit more stories about why you chose credibility and branding as the most important thing that Cyberport has helped you with? Sure. Okay, uh, so as many of you know, being a, in a startup, cash is very limited. Um, if we don't have money to do a lot of investments in advertisement, you know, TV ads, billboards ads, and, all, and whatnot. And so uh, what it comes down to is what we can provide our end users uh, to sort of assure them that we are a legitimate company. We're really here trying to provide a solution. And actually Cyberport is a very good word, term, however you may want to call it, to tell our audience that uh, we're actually um, legitimate. So uh, in that sense, you know, we actually have a lot of um, uh, audience that we have converted or a lot of customers that we have converted because we told them that we are from Cyberport. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, Cyberport has helped, it, helped us a lot in closing deals and um, branding is definitely one of the key for us. Yeah, I think similar to that, that, that line actually sort of echoing Simon and Kyle, I think for us, it's really like credibility. I think for our solution, we really do work more on the B2B market. And again, to sort of be able to say that, you know, our organization, our business model, our resources, uh, the, the, uh, the support from, uh, from Cyberport really does, uh, I guess, you know, when, when our clients or potential clients uh, sort of hear our pitch or hear our solutions, they can actually say, 
oh, do you actually support my cyber port? That already gets you through the, uh, a number of doors rather than just a complete unknown. That's why I think for credibility, I think for, for, for a young startup, it, it, it's, it's worth its weight in gold, if not more. So I think that's really a key point for us. Right, I see. And it's this is really interesting because uh, when I was researching about Cyberport, I've also read other startups found that the branding, the stamp of approval from Cyberport also helped them with mm. their fundraising. So did you have some experience with that as well like when you were doing some fundraising, when you mentioned to an investor or actually not necessarily fundraising or even like speaking to partners, did having that stamp of approval from Cyberport help you as well, Gary? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I think once you, I think even for us, because um, I, I put like office space here. Uh, so, so just to give you a bit of history, um, you know, we started off building real inflow in, um, you know, my co-founder's apartment, um, which we did for uh, probably around six or seven, six to seven months. And so, you know, we basically spent every you know moment together, and I think it got to the stage where we got, you know, we knew what each other was thinking. <laughs> like, we could, predict what we would do next so we're like okay maybe we should try and you know get our own space uh, so so then we moved out and we first moved to a, a, a co-working space we just didn't have any windows but it was still like you know kind of uh, what so to say and then we ended up moving to to we work um you know having a, you know, a bit more more space and we had um we could use some meeting rooms and stuff and but i think once we moved to we got free office space uh so cyberport provides uh, two years of uh, free office space during the program if you choose the on-site option. Uh, so for us, it was really the first time that we could have, you know, the physical presence and really establish, uh, despite the COVID situation, um, you know, a firm office space. So I think in terms of branding as well, uh, you know, just when you when you're hosting meetings, inviting clients over, it makes a big difference uh, to your branding as well. Right, I see. So other than office space, were there any other facilities that Cyberpoint has provided and which you thought was useful? Um, the climbing wall, <laughs> but I haven't used that yet. <laughs> We're not going to be crazy. <laughs> but, um, no, uh, I mean, we use the meeting rooms pretty frequently, um, more often than I, I thought we would, uh, which is which has been a huge help. And I think just having the whole facilities and, and grounds because it makes a big difference you know, to me from working from home every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming, it's almost like a campus here, yeah. so. You know, it, it does make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. and definitely yeah. much more professional to invite your partners or clients over here rather than your room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were like using also like friends offices before, you know, different companies and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it's actually nice to have our, yeah. our logo at least on the door. <laughs> so. Of course. Okay, and it's very interesting you mentioned that actually you guys are already moving forward from the incubation fund to the macro fund. And I know, Kyle, you also touched upon it as well. You used to be in the micro fund, and I understand I'm in workplace data as well. You guys started off with the Cyberport Creative Micro Fund and then moved on to become an incubator. Can you guys tell us more about the process of how you can kind of graduate from one stage to another through the Cyberport program? Well, I, I may not be the best person to introduce the Cyberport program, but uh, we actually jumped the, uh, the first part, I mean, we directly go to the uh, the, um, the, the, the next one, the incubator one, so that we actually uh, jump the CVCF entrance. So I, I heard that there are two entrances to, to, to join the Cyberport program. And if you join step one, you can go to step two, and you can, or you can jump over this uh, step one and go direct to, uh, to step, step two. Because uh, when we apply to Cyberport, we actually already, um, we are already uh, uh, relatively uh, late stage. So we already, uh, like we got the, uh, uh, we are we're at the 2019 batch. Uh, we entered our part in May. Um, yeah, and then in March we got the uh, the ICT award for our uh, business. So that we are actually uh, going to grow fast. So uh, we just went through the first went through the first stage and we are now we are looking at. The third step, 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 the the third step, 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 the third 100k yeah and then um the microphone really is just giving you um 
a support on kickstarting your idea, right? Um, so the microfund was uh, pretty, it was pretty helpful because, um, you know, we, we didn't raise funds, we didn't use a lot of money off, uh, off our own pocket. So uh, microfund helped us on that end. And then the incubation was more about how you scale your product, how you make your product more um, popular in, you know, amongst the business side or the customer. And so, you know, I, I would say um, it depends on what your stage is, but it, it, the micro fund and the incubation is quite different in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think to echo your experience, Kyle, I mean, I think for us, uh, we did the CCMF first. And I think for that, it was more really proof of concept, right? It was like, you know, we had an idea. We had this sort of, you know, this thought, you know, you know, as we always do over a few drinks, like, oh, hey, would it be fun if we did this? And I think the incubate, uh, the, the, the creative micro fund at least allows you to say, well, is there anything behind it? Is this actually something that's feasible? Can we create something uh, that, that really brings your idea into some kind of reality? And then once we sort of completed that, we actually built our first uh, first platform through the uh, through the micro fund. And at that point, we then moved into, we actually took us, uh, we didn't get in the first time the CIP, the incubation. We then uh, continued to develop over the six months. And then when we did, did actually get into the incubation program, we as the startup were more mature. We were able to, we were having more commercial discussions. So the incubation program came in at the right time because it allowed us to then expand. Very similar to what Carl mentioned, it, was, it wasn't so much about does it work, but rather how can it work better? Or how, uh, uh, with the support of Thai you know, what is it that we need as a company to really become commercially viable? And that's where the incubation uh, program, the resources uh, and the funding was, was, was useful. Right, I see. Thanks, guys. So another big thing about Thai Report is its network. So we learned from Steve's presentation earlier that there's the Thai Report Enterprise Network, Thai Report Investors Network, there's also the Professional Services Network. Um, have you guys been able to leverage on these networks or attend any of the events organized by the network? For example, they have the, uh, the CVCF, the uh, Cyberport Venture Capital Forum. Were you guys able to use uh, these events and what, were they helpful to you guys? Oh, actually, personally, uh, my co-founder and myself, we actually uh, were one of, were hosted one of the booths uh, in the CVCF two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. It was definitely very, um, actually, Cyberport has one of the strongest VC networks uh, right now uh, in Hong Kong. And the forum actually was a very convenient platform for us to get to know a lot of different VCs in the market. And for us, it was, um, we were able to pitch to, you know, like 30, 40 different VCs in our booth. We gathered interest and definitely helped us in the future that whenever we want to raise funds, we can just, you know, um, give them a call and just say, you know, we're ready. We have our product, you know, we're ready to raise fund. Um, are you willing to spend 50 minutes um, and give us the time to pitch? And so, um, yeah, definitely Cyberport is very useful uh, in, in the raising funds sort of, and, you know, echoing Simon too, you know, other than the fund matching, the VCs were very strong in Cyberport. Okay. So other than the formal network, have you guys, found the community in Cyberport being helpful? For example, are there like neighbors next to your offices or you were able to meet other startups here in the community and able to share experiences or even explore opportunities to collaborate? Uh, well, for collaboration, uh, uh, we, 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 we actually, we because we all have our own um, uh, directions. So it's not so common that we have something to cross over, but it's very useful to us for us to catch up like how we're doing in COVID-19 so that we know more about not only from our industry, but other businesses in this uh, environment. So it actually uh, is quite useful for the informal gathering. And uh, and also echoing uh, Kyle, uh, the network, apart from the uh, the VC network, uh, some of them also uh, help us to link up with the um, um, tier one partners so that so if some business they uh they they, they wonder if they want to join cyberport uh uh it's not only about the money it's uh help you to build a portfolio with um some tier one partners so you can go go further so if you haven't uh started with some good b2b partnerships uh cyberport is a very good way to link you up in right. that sense okay so the linkage not only with investors, but also with uh, partners as yeah, well. Yeah, other B2Bs. Okay, I see. So now we've learned about some of the benefits 
of the Cyberport Integration Program and being part of this ecosystem. I think many of the audience would be interested to learn more about the application process. So how did you guys first, like, but before we do that, how did you guys first hear about the Cyberport Integration Program? Of course, there's a lot of information on the website, but how did you guys know of this program in the first place? Um, yeah, I think for us, it's mainly just through, you know, the startup network and, you know, in Hong Kong, the, the funding is still, I would say, quite limited in, in terms of early stage startups. Uh, so what Cyberport provides is, is very good, um, you know, be, because it provides a platform, um, you know, for if you at that early stage, you know, provide some initial funding, uh, you know, facilities and, and other resources. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I think for us, it was just you know, the, the startup, startup network. Yeah. Okay. How about you guys? Uh, well, for myself, um, I actually got in touch with Cyberport through uh, HKUST, uh, where I had my MBA uh, and also where I met my co-founder. Um, so my co-founder and I um, sort of had idea to, to start something together. And um, the first thing we went to is the Entrepreneurship Center in HKUST. They have very strong uh, network with Cyberport. And they referred us to Cyberport to, you know, talk to them and see whether we can uh, pitch our idea and get some funding um, from from Cyberport. And so, I mean, I, I would definitely encourage uh, for those who are still in, in school right now to talk to the um, the entrepreneurship department or centers or whatever, because Cyberport has very strong networks with uh, a lot of schools, not only universities in Hong Kong. Right. Yeah. Okay. Are you? Yeah. Similar. It's uh, from. Uh, uh, CEOs, uh, startup friends, and uh, we are, yeah, and we are told that uh, that uh, they are free money and it's uh, free support, <laughs> and then uh, it's very business focused, uh, so that uh, it can help uh, high growth business to go to another step. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, from my side, I think Cyberport is one of the um, the go to uh, sort mm -hmm. of uh, programs for entrepreneurship for, for startups in Hong Kong. I mean, I think. Um, they have almost become synonymous. Uh, that if you do have an idea, I think with uh, the relationship that Cyberport has, um, not not only with the government but also with obviously the startup communities, uh, it's um, it's almost like first so, so top of mind. So right. in terms of uh, how do we become aware of it? Well, it was kind of uh, deeper, you know, really. Right. Okay. So let's go back to the whiteboard. So uh, on the application process, how hard would you rate it? Well, one being the easiest, ten being the hardest. <laughs> five, seven, five, one. <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now I want you guys to tell tell the audience like. What, why you've given this number. So let's start with the lowest. Simon, you okay. thought it was super easy. <laughs> yeah, because it's not about me. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's our CEO self. But then, uh, uh, there's another reason. Because uh, we already gone through a lot of competitions. So the, our decks, our introduction, our, our business record, and also we also went through uh, create round. So that it's quite straightforward for us to present our people, our business. And uh, so it's quite natural that uh, we go to this step. So uh, to us, it's not an extra pressure, but then it's uh, useful uh, for us to get prepared uh, before. So actually we did the work before. Mm, okay. That's why it's easy. So you guys were quite a seasoned- uh, uh, Seasoned applicant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and having had a lot of experiences- like Yeah, in- uh, Pictures mm, already. Yep. Okay, that's great. How about you guys, five? Right in the middle, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I think for us, um, I think also going through both the, uh, the creative micro fund, but also then moving into the incubation program, I think the application process, I think it's sort of part of the course in, in a way. It's, it's uh, the questions and content that um, if you are a very early stage company, you need to know those things. Like what is your business model? You know, what, who is your intended audience? Um, you know, uh, what is your mission, vision, so on and so forth. So I think those things, uh, while, it can feel academic at the time, like, oh my God, how long is this form? How much information do I have to get? Um, but yeah, I think if you were to uh, look at it from a very objective perspective, you need to know these things, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think uh, it was uh, what we would expect to, to do to, to fill it out. But as with anything else, you know, we, we probably only had maybe 50% of, of the material ready. So then you also had to then 
prepare the rest of it and to sit down with your co-founders or or with you know your various uh, you know mentors or your your support structure to then work out what is it that you want to represent uh, to this panel of people who will assess you as a business. So I think uh, it, it does take some time. It does take some, it does take a process, but um, I think we are stronger and more. Uh, there is clarity amongst ourselves as a startup to uh, as a result of the application process. Okay. Oh, I, I I would give it a five because um, the five actually comes from um, the application process where you have to know what you're doing, um, you know the why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and you really have to explain yourselves very clearly in the application form and also during the pitching session um, what you're trying to do. And so, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. But then, why it's not why I, I, I excluded the other five is because, um, well, partly because the nature of the money is a grant. It's not like they're taking equity from you, so they're not they're not as um, focused on the numbers. You know, uh, when you pitch a VC, they really care about the numbers, what the return, and all that. But then in Cyberport, they care more about the co-founders, the idea. You know, do you have uh, heart in it like are you are you the right person um, to to take this business to the next level so that's why I would I would give it a five because it's more on the person mm -hmm. and as long as you can tell them that or you can show that you have, you're passionate you have um, you have what it takes you've done your research you know your work then you know it's it might it could be just a one two for mm -hmm. for a lot of applicants okay. yeah. so it's very much also about the founder as well as the business and business model. Okay. Yeah. And Gary, why did you give a seven? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, mine is justified because we got rejected twice <laughs> before <laughs> being accepted. So it's first time lucky for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first time we were, um, uh, you know, probably just too early stage with uh, at the idea concept. So we were probably better suited to the microphone. But I think, um, you know, what Iman and uh, Kyle have been saying as well, it's like, it, it makes you really think about things that, you know, you might not have thought of before, uh, especially if you're at the very early stage. Uh, so there's some questions that pop up and, you know, you, you just need to show that you fought through it and you, know, you have a vision. And you know, like you're saying, you are the founder to take that uh, to reality, I guess. Um, so yeah, and I, I just felt like, um, you know, we went through Betatron and that was already quite hard to get into, but I, I felt the last interview we got, not roasted a bit, but <laughs> we, they had some pretty tough questions. So. Uh, you know, it wasn't as straightforward as you know um, okay. as you would think. So, no, I mean, it's not like um, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, you just have to make sure that you know you can show that you've got the traction. Yeah. Uh, I think for us, and that and that we got our product to to be. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned you were a third time lucky, mm -hmm. and of course, by the third time you are more mature. But would you say that there was something you did differently um, that made you successful at the third time? I think for the third time, uh, because uh, one part of our business model is, I guess, the way we collect data, which is, I think, uh, Cyberpool are very good so that if you don't um, get accepted at some stage, you can go back and get feedback. So I think for us, the main concerns were around our business model and also our data collection uh, methods. So we really like you know, made sure that we kind of proven that model and shown it in our application as well. And I think by the third time, we could really show our in the market. So I think these were some of the factors that probably helped us get through the third time. Okay, I see. So we learned from Gary not to give up, for sure. And that <laughs> perseverance is definitely an attitude that startup founders must possess. In fact, anyone should possess. But I think also one note that I would like to add here. So when we were talking to Cyberport, uh, we understood from them also that for applicants who might not have gotten the first or even second time, not to give up try and apply again but also you can become a community member an on-site community member so that you can still be part of the cyberport ecosystem be able to grow with the support that's available here so then maybe at a later stage you are more mature and will be able to qualify for the incubation program so that's a word for the startup in the audience so never give up and you can keep trying and also you can join the cyberport as an on-site community member so um lastly any tips that you guys would want to share with someone who wants to apply to the program third time's a charm i think you have more tips <laughs> yeah you think we want to add for 
too many tips. <laughs> I would say uh, we talked about the application length. It is quite long. Um, I, I think that's what we did the second time. We probably did it in like quite a busy period. <laughs> we probably didn't spend enough time on it. But I think the upcoming deadline for the next presentation program is uh, 1st of April. So I would start now or today if you can. <laughs> it is a long uh, process. As we said, there's some uh, documents or things that you might not have thought of that you need to prepare uh, to get ready. So uh, definitely take your time. And I, I, I think just focus on you know your, your if you have built something, yeah, focus on that, uh, focus on your traction and, and why you know, as uh, founders, you are the one to solve the problem. And I think if you show that and show the passion. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so definitely start early. Give it at least a month. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and don't give up if uh, <laughs> you don't get in this time. <laughs> okay, what about you, Kyle? Uh, the, well, for me, right? Like, I'm just sharing what I've been through. So I, as I said, I went through um, HKUST to to get into Cyreport. And I think the, um, the help and the, the network there really helped me out. So I would encourage or strongly encourage those who are still in school or even if you're not in school, um, you're just a startup who wants to get into Cyberport, is to reach out to Cyberport or people in Cyberport, talk to them, um, especially you know the program managers and for CCMF or CIP, because um, they probably will have an idea before you even apply whether your um, idea or application will go through, and they because you know they see thousands of applications every year and they'll be able to give you some pointers on how you should approach it um, and, or fine tune your business idea um, in order to get into the cyberport community. And so, yeah, I, I would say the first and foremost important thing is to get to know the people in cyberport, understand what cyberport wants from their um, you know, startup community. Right, yeah. it, I guess it's quite similar to applying to a job or even to uni. You can yeah. know the people there, understand what the admissions team look for, and then you can see um, how you can tailor your product more to fit uh, what they're looking for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Okay. How about for you, Ayman? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that I cut off my idea, man. <laughs> 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 the, the response. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree that I think, uh, you know, I think as a startup, you you do tend to get caught in your own bubble. You kind of think, okay, you're, you're so focused on your product or, or your service or what you need to obviously engage with your investment and so on and so forth that, uh, that you can get somewhat blindsided in a way. So I think the application process is quite useful that it, at least it, it enabled at least for us to rethink what is it that we actually need to do to approach the wider market. And I think uh, speaking with the community and reaching out, I think, I mean, my experience personally with the, with the program is everyone is super friendly. Uh, and, and it's not like a, oh no, the application process is, you know, it's a super secret thing. You, we, we, can't, we can't tell you about it. And, and they, you know, uh, unless of, you know, through threat of death, but it's more that they're happy to share. So, you know, here are the key types of areas or, or areas of focus you should look into, um, you know, and they'll give you advice. And again, I, th I think as a startup, you just need to take that advice. And it may, it might not always be positive. It might be negative. It might be painful to hear. It might be uh, something that reaffirms yourself. But I think having that, Sort of feedback loop, having uh, those open doors to uh, to share and to uh, build those relationships. I think it is, that, that's probably the best way to position yourself well for, for the actual application. Okay. Yeah. Um. Um. Apart from the like uh, joining more competition uh, thing that I mentioned, uh, I think that uh, like uh, Kyle mentioned, the people is quite important in uh, this application, and from uh, so that uh, well, some people may find it hard to prove the team. Uh, we are very lucky. We have a CEO that went through the whole uh, expansion process so that he can prove we have the right ability to um, do it. But then uh, try to take reference from as many uh, past incubate as possible. And then you'll find that, that uh, the program is more plural than you thought. It's not that every, every uh, incubate has to be a future unicorn. So that uh, different, there are different ways, that different values, and or some different business that can disrupt the industry in some way. That can uh, is good for the ecosystem, so that it, it doesn't need to worry too much. And as as, as some of us said, um, Cyberpol will also give feedback, which is very good. And you have to uh, complete your deck anyway, so that it's a very good exercise and treat it as a good. Ex useful experience for future. So that just try it. Okay, please. 
So, so far, uh, we have learned about your businesses and then some of the benefits that you found from the incubation program, as well as some tips that you've shared with the audience on the application process. So I would also want to want you guys to share a little bit about certain, um, I think some experiences and also tips about uh, the startup space generally. So Kyle, I when I researched Roots, I noticed you guys have onboarded a lot of big banks, like HSBC, uh, DBS. Um, so would you, have any tips to share with other startups out there who um, have to, for example, pitch to the big guys? For example, I, what I really noticed at Top Tech Institute is that a lot of Top Tech solutions have to be sold to the real estate developers. So how did, were you able to persuade these big guys to adopt the startup solution? Um, well, there's no real like magic formula, but then I think one of the, uh, most important thing or element that you have or you must have in order to pitch to giant elephants is to show uh, well is to know their know your audience first first of all um, because um, even though you might need the you know the big businesses to support your startup at the same time you also want to you, you also want to create value for their ecosystem for their businesses too right so you have to tell them, you know, what's in it for them. You know, that's like, that's like the most important thing. You know, uh, tell them, let's say, uh, you know, let's say for example, oh, Roots is uh, uh, um, a, a big startup right now. We have a lot of users every day, every month. And if you collaborate with us, it will definitely benefit your brand, that benefit your business, benefit your bottom line. You know, I think that's um, one of the most important thing if you want to talk to the big, big banks or, you know, other big conglomerates. Um, uh, it, it, you know, when, when you want to pitch them. So yeah, I, I think I think talking to them, letting them know what's in it for them, what can they benefit from you and not what you want to get from them is, is very important. Yeah. Showing how you could be helpful. Yeah. Okay. You guys have similar experiences to share? Maybe not necessarily with like uh, big guys, but also like with partners. Would you have any tips that you could share with the audience? Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think from my side, I think it, it's, I think know your audience is absolutely uh, you know one of the key uh, sort of tenets of, of any successful business, right? But I think from 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 my side, I think it's also as a startup we ha we tend to have the agility or the speed that large companies don't necessarily have. Uh, like you know, if we I, mean, I know for example uh, with, with Workplace Beta, we originally were not going into the hardware space because it's quite mature, it's, it's sort of high capital cost. Um, and, and, and especially for prop tech, there's you know, sort of a dime a dozen in terms of, sort of what was sort of out there. But through Cyport support, through the sort of mentorship, through, uh, I guess, you know, and also understanding the pain points that a lot of um, the larger companies are having is that while the tech itself is not new, they had troubles adopting it because they were already resource constrained. You were going to say to someone in an IT department in a property company, hey, let's add another 10,000 devices to your building to, for, for, for new data feeds. They'd be like, okay, give me the people, give me the resources, give me the the, 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 the headcount, which again, a startup, we have a lot more agility about that. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, understand, understand your market, uh, know your audience, um, see where, what challenges they face. And then can your solution actually sort of address those concerns for them so you can create these win-win scenarios. Okay, I see. Um, okay, and um, in terms of the COVID situation, actually Sam may also touch upon this before, how has that affected your business? I would imagine actually for Iman that um, the COVID situation may have increased an uptick in inquiries yeah. because a lot of uh, office managers would say, hey, how a lot of people have been working from home. Then they might want to relook at their office space mm -hmm. and see how it could be reconfigured to be more yeah. efficient. Yeah, but exactly right. I mean, and in fact, I mean, it's a silver lining. I mean, I think, I think no one wants this pandemic, but I think it's one of the silver linings is it has brought workplace strategy into top of mind. Uh, I think before it was something that people would sort of consider once every 10 years when the lease came up, uh, right? Whereas now it's more, um, how do you use that space to be productive? How can we enable um, our uh, sort of employees or our occupants to, uh, uh, to to better use the space? I, I think as much as we all, uh, both say pre-COVID, loved to work from home, we love the idea of it. I think, especially us with kids, um, we want we, we love the office. We want, we want to go back to the office. We want to meet our colleagues and our friends and have that interaction. And I think the answer is somewhere in between where you may spend, say, two days at home, three days in the office or vice versa. 
And so I think the workplace has to adapt for that. I think prop tech is one sort of approach that can sort of enable some of these, uh, I guess, new ways of working. Um, and, and I think that that's somewhere where, uh, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a silver lining to, to, to this, uh, this challenge that we all face with, with the pandemic for us. Okay, I see. Well, uh, thank you very much, Gary, Kyle, Iman, and Simon for your time today, and also for sharing with the audience your experiences of the Cyberport Incubation Program, more sharing with the audience about more about your business and also some tips on uh, for other startups audience out there. So I'm personally very excited to continue to follow your journey and to watch your businesses grow from strength to strength. And I hope that some of the audience that are with us today would be inspired to join the Cyberport Incubation Program as well. So uh, as a final note, if you are a PropTech startup or if you're interested to learn more about PropTech, please join us at PropTech Institute uh, through our website, poptechinstitute.org. And similarly, if you're interested in learning more about the Cyberport uh, Incubation Program, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us and see, so, and we'll be more than happy to share more information with you. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, and have a great Wednesday.